Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here again to share another passage with you. I started last week talking about events before Easter, and today I'm going to begin a week talking about events after Easter. Now, I hope yesterday you went to church, or at least did something to recognize the presence of God. Easter is the biggest day in the life of the church. Now, I know Christmas gets more publicity, but without Easter, Christmas wouldn't mean much at all. And today I want to read what happened on that first day. Now, if you went to church, you probably heard lots of preaching, lots of talking. If you watched it on some show, you probably heard that. But let's look at this one in Luke chapter 24, beginning with the first verse. But very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, Two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He is risen from the dead. Now, if you can kind of picture this, this story here, the two ladies, all they're trying to do is do their religious duty and finish anointing the body. Now, they couldn't do that on Friday because it was too close to sundown, and Jewish folks couldn't do anything after sundown. So they get up early. This is Sunday morning, the day after the Jewish Sabbath, which is Saturday. And they're walking to the tomb, probably wondering how they're going to get that heavy stone out of the way. In fact, another gospel talks about that. But they get there and they see that the stone is already gone. Now, this should be a number one clue that things aren't going to be what they thought they were going to be. And I'll stop right here and say, have you ever found out in life that things don't turn out the way you thought they were going to turn out? Hmm. Well, if you've never experienced that wonder, <laughs> joy, and, and absolute surprise, then I don't know what to say. You've missed out. But I'm betting there are very few who haven't experienced something like that. So they get there, and they see two men in dazzling robes. I don't know what a dazzling robe is. It must have been fabulous. Now, usually in artwork, we depict this with like light on the robes, bright light. And maybe that's what it was. I don't know. I think of that old custom about uh, bedazzling things where you put, you put shiny uh, stickers and, and chips and whatnot over something to make it look more spectacular. Maybe it was something like that. All I know is that the two guys these women saw scared them something fierce. Now, that would be understandable because they're going to a tomb where there's supposed to be a dead body and nobody else is supposed to be there. Hmm. What would you do in that situation? How would you feel? Probably similar to these ladies. So it says they bowed to the ground. And they, they didn't even want to look at them. They, they, they either thought that they were somehow miraculous so they should worship them, or they thought, gosh, these guys are going to kill us, or somewhere in between. But it says that they, they bowed down, put their heads to the ground. And while they're doing that, one of them says, 
Let me read the words again to you. Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Now, I don't know about you, but if I had been one of those ladies, that statement would have shook, shaken me to the core. Why are you looking for someone who's alive here in the place of the dead? What do you mean he's alive? We watched him die. We started anointing the body. We just couldn't finish it. What are you talking about? And the men say, he's not here. He has risen, just as he said he would. So they look, and sure enough, there's nobody there. <laughs> what an encounter with God. Now, I don't know if your encounters with God are as dramatic as this one, but I do know that we experience encounters with God all the time, especially when we're in our darkest hour. These ladies, they were just really sad ladies who had lost their friend, Jesus. Let that sink in a minute. They had lost their friend, Jesus. And now they can't even go and finish anointing the body because there is none. What are they supposed to think? What would you have thought? Well, he's not there, they say. The tomb wasn't big enough to keep Jesus down. And therefore, there is no struggle in your life that is too big to keep Jesus from helping out. I don't know what form that'll take. I don't know how long it'll take. I just know there is no struggle too big for the presence of God to get you through. Well, you think about it. I'll share some more thoughts this week. If you have a need or a concern, let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. Thanks so much for listening. Hope you have a wonderful week. I'll be back tomorrow. God bless you.